So I use Dartfish Mobile, okay, to get my athletes splits and do video analysis. I can use Dartfish Mobile or I can use Canovia on a Windows, but right now I'm on my Mac. So this is Dartfish TV, okay? So here's the kid's video, okay? It's going to give me his splits. the hurdles and then once i have the splits i'm going to come to the home page and i'm going to type in the athlete's name okay i'm going to type in the date of the meet of 23 okay i'm going to type in the meet name okay and then from here it is the men's one tens. Okay. So through the video that I showed you guys of that athlete, we know that hurdle one was 3.00. Okay. I'm going to press tab and then it's 1.23, 1.23. One point two three, one sixteen, one twenty, one point two three, one sixteen. 20, 1.23, and then run in was 1.53. Now, once I have that, okay, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to press enter. Okay, now that saved it. So from there, I'm going to go to the boys 110. Okay, and then here is the gentleman's information just put in okay i can make notes i can make comments whatever i want to do as a coach i can make comments now how do i analyze this man's race okay so i'm going to go to the hurdle calculator chart okay i'm going to scroll down to the men's 110s okay so now for this young man his goal is 1490 as a freshman okay so once I do that, it now gives me the hurdle cumulative splits that he needs to be at, but it's also going to give me his hurdle unit splits for this. Right here is going to give me his hurdle distances that he needs to practice at that's going to match these hurdle splits, okay, and that velocity. All right, so that's a recommendation. I might have to change it based off of the kid, based off of the parameters. It depends on a lot of different factors. However, I may start here or I may start a little bit higher or lesser. Okay. So now that I have that, okay, now I'm going to analyze that kid's race that I just put in the information for. Okay. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to select the kid's name. I'm going to select the date. I'm going to press refresh. Okay, now what I have here now is a side to side comparison of what his target goal time is and then what his current time was for that meet. Okay, so now I can see here, okay, he was 30294. Okay, probably need to work on getting a little bit better and start. Okay, and then he was 123, 118. He was 423, 546, and he was 527 and 123. 
So you can see just from this right here, I need to work on improving his start over the first four hurdles, which is zone one, which would be his acceleration. Okay, then we look here and we go to zones two, okay, which is the max velocity hurdles five, six, and seven. He's at 116, 120, 123. Okay, so 116 is not bad. Well, he's not able to hold and maintain that velocity. He's actually going back and decelerating, okay? So I need to work on those things, okay? So now I can compare, okay, 743, 764, 764 compared to here, okay? So now what does that tell me? That tells me that really for this kid, I need to work on his ability to better accelerate through zone one, okay? And then I need to lower the hurdles down and bring in the hurdles for five through seven, zone two. So I need to work on getting him quicker in between that zone to speed it up. So what am I going to do with that? I'm probably going to most likely start at eight meters, okay? Why am I going to say eight meters? Because that's usually going to be around close to the average of these things, okay? I'm going to put eight meters down. I'm going to lower the hurdles down to 33, and I'm going to have him do an eight-step approach or a six-step approach to hurdle one, and I'm having him go, okay? Now, I might be able to do some zone here, okay, which is now I go to the hurdle uh, workout parameters, okay? Now, if I know his goal time is 1490, okay, and I'm going to go, uh, sorry, it's, uh, going to go to the mid, okay? And I'm going to go 1490, okay? Let's just, for example, let's just keep it at, I'll scroll down and let's go, let's keep it at 8.25, okay? So I'm going to go 8.25 all the way across the board for this young man, okay? Now, what it did there is now it gives it gives me the distances that each hurdle is going to be at. So now I don't have to do the step, two step foot in, three step foot in, four step foot in, whatever you guys do from a shoe link standpoint. I can just take a tape measure out, roll it out, and put the hurdles at the distances that the calculator program is giving me. Okay. Now the cool thing is based off of target time. Okay, it's now going to give you the splits that he's going to have at 8.25 distances, okay? So I can set it up that way. I can even go further, okay? So let's say I can go 850, okay? So this is faster, and it's going to automatically adjust the distances and times between, okay? However, let's say I want to do an eight-step approach, okay? So we're going to stay at 8.5, 8.25 meters, Okay, I'm going to set his takeoff, his landing. Okay, hurdle spacing, I'm going to put 8.25. Okay, that tells me his average stride length is now going to be 1.63 for that distance. Okay, and if I want to do a five-step approach in between the hurdles, okay, that is going to be roughly around 11.52. Now, if I know that, okay, I'm going to go up here now to my five-step drill. Okay, my three-step and five-step drill, and I'm going to adjust. So I'm going to go 825 for zone one, okay, to work his acceleration, which is set up, okay? Now from hurdles four through five, I'm going to do a five-step, okay? And so over here, the five-step suggestion was 1152, okay? So I'm going to come down here, okay, and I'm going to select 1150, now that changes it up, and I can do the exact same thing here now. I'm going to go down, and I'm going to say 850, okay? And then I'm going to go 1150, okay? And then I'm going to go back to 825, okay? So now I have a zone hurdling of three-step, five-step. So he'll go through three-step. The, for the first zones one through four and then hurdles four through five is going to be a five step which is for some of you in the coaching world that is known as the take away the fourth hurdle and then there's no hurdle at the fourth hurdle 
and then take away, and then they have hurdle five. Okay. It's the same concept. Okay. I'm just not taking out the hurdle. I'm taking a zone and I'm extending it out for five step. So now all the hurdle distances are set for this. And now I can have this guy and it's going to give me the cumulative times that that athlete needs to run for it. Okay. So he needs to go, uh, 106, 104, 103, 142 for his five step. Okay. And then it continues going. So now as I do that, I'm going to track that. Okay. So if I know this is set up 14, nine, I know the hurdle splits that he needs to have in practice. I know the hurdle distances that he needs to be set up at to elicit those splits to be able to do that. So as we keep going, then I just go back when you runs an another meet. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to the homepage. I'm going to put in his information. Okay. I'm going to go to the hurdle calculator chart and I'm going to compare this. Okay. So that is how I'm utilizing my hurdle calculator program for myself. And again, this is, I designed it like this because I was doing this already as a coach, I just did this to make it more simpler for me and quicker. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more insight. If you're interested, the link is below, click on it to go get your program today. It is a windows based program. So if you have a Mac, you will not be able to use it on a Mac. It can only be used right now on the windows program that has Excel. Okay. So hopefully this helps people get a little bit more understanding of the hurdle calculator program and how I utilize it and what I do.